Hey everyone, this is Josh from the Music Tech Help Guy channel, and in this video I'm going to show you how to install Windows on a Mac using the Boot Camp Assistant utility. Depending on what year and model of Mac you have, this should work with Windows 7, 8, and or 10. For this video I'm using a 2012 Mac Mini, and I'm running Mac OS Sierra 10.12. But the process should be pretty much the same for the last three or four versions of OS 10 as well. A few years ago I made a similar video on how to install Windows 7 on a Mac, but in that video I used a Windows 7 install disk, like an actual DVD copy. Nowadays most people aren't using DVD install disks, so I figured I'd make an updated video where we install Windows with an ISO file downloaded from the Microsoft website. So to do this you'll need four things, obviously the Windows ISO file, which I'll show you how to download in just a moment, a legit Windows license key purchased from Microsoft or elsewhere, a USB thumb drive with at least 8 gigabytes on it. This uh, is what we'll use to create a bootable install disk for the Windows ISO, as well as store our bootcamp setup files and drivers. And lastly, a compatible Mac computer with at least 37 gigabytes of free space to install Windows. However, I'd recommend at least double that or more so you can actually have some room for apps and files and whatnot. Also, there's three very important things I'd like to mention before we get started. Number one, before you do this, make sure that you back up any files that you have on your Mac. So do a time machine backup or use another app like Carbon Copy Cloner to make a physical backup of your system drive. This is just a fail safe in case anything goes wrong. Number two, make sure to do a little bit of research and see exactly what your model of Mac is compatible with. Some older Macs will only let you install Windows 7 or 8 and not version 10. Number three, some older computers will only let you install Windows with a physical DVD disk. There's actually two workarounds for this specific situation that I'll address when we get to that point. But otherwise, if you're using a newer Mac model like a 2012 and newer, you shouldn't have an issue. Again, just do a little research beforehand and see exactly what your Mac is compatible with. All right, so with the background information out of the way, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is search in your web browser for your Windows ISO download. I'm installing Windows 10. You'll see the top result is direct from Microsoft. And if you want the specific web address for Windows 10, there it is. So I'll click on that and it'll take me directly to the Microsoft Windows 10 ISO web page. Here I'll select what edition of Windows 10 I have. And then I'll select the language I need, so I'll choose English. Then it'll give me the 64 or 32-bit version options to download. I need 64-bit, so I'll click on that and the download starts. As you can see, it's gonna take a little bit to download, so I'll do that off screen and I'll be right back. After the download is complete, you'll open Boot Camp Assistant by searching for it in the spotlight, or you can find it under Applications Utilities. The first screen just explains what Boot Camp is, so you'll just hit Continue. The second screen allows you to select the tasks you'd like to complete. Unless you have an incomplete installation of Windows, you'll wanna do all three of these. The first is to create a Windows 7 or later install disk. So this is going to take the ISO file we downloaded and create an install disk with your USB thumb drive. So make sure that's plugged in. And again, depending on the year and model of your computer, it may only give you an option to install Windows 7 and 8 without the option for 10. Now if you don't see this first option, it means that your computer is probably a bit older and wants you to use a Windows installation DVD. If you don't see the top option, there are a couple workarounds though. The first is you can burn your ISO file onto a physical disk, a DVD, and use that if your computer has an optical drive. Or two, you can actually alter the boot camp utility file with text edit or Xcode to recognize your computer and add this option. I've actually used both of these workarounds on an older 2010 iMac as well as a 2010 Mac Mini, and they both worked. But the second option is probably gonna to be too complicated for most people, so if you run into this problem, I'll leave a couple articles that help me out in the video description below. The second option says it's going to download the Windows Boot Camp support software from Apple. This will also be saved on the thumb drive. It says that it needs to be formatted as MS-DOS FAT, but the first option actually automatically formats the drive to MS-DOS FAT, so you don't actually need to deal with disk utility at all, unless you're skipping the first step because you're using a physical installation disk. And the third option partitions a chunk of your hard drive to install Windows on. You can also use a separate dedicated internal drive for Windows if you have that. So you'll hit continue and the next screen wants us to locate the ISO image that we downloaded. In my case it automatically found it for me but you can manually select it from your downloads folder if it doesn't. Also make sure that the destination disk is the USB thumb drive that you have plugged in. After you hit continue it'll verify with you that the disk will be formatted and erased. 
It'll format the thumb drive, copy Windows files over from the ISO, and download and save Windows support software onto the thumb drive. This step can take quite a while. I've had it take only five or 10 minutes, but I've also had it take up to 30 minutes or so to complete this step, so just be patient. It also helps if you can hook your computer up to a wired internet connection as opposed to using Wi-Fi. All right, so after the format and download is done, it'll ask you for your administrator password, and then it'll ask you to create a partition on your hard drive for Windows. For Windows 10, it's asking for a minimum of 37 gigs for Windows, but I recommend giving it a lot more than that. So here I'm gonna give it 170 gigs. Also, if your Mac has a second internal drive, it'll let you create a dedicated partition for Windows. I like this option best if it's possible because it separates the Mac and Windows operating systems on two separate hard drives. I'm using my Mac Mini here, which I upgraded with a second solid state drive, so I'll dedicate that for Windows. After this, it'll ask you for your password again, format the drive, and then reboot the computer into the Windows installer. Once the computer reboots, it boots the Windows installer on the thumb drive. This may take a bit of time as well, and keep in mind I'm just editing out a lot of the load times for this video. Also, don't be surprised when we get to the setup screen if the colors and zoom look a little bit different than yours. Mine was all grayscale and zoomed in, but I've also seen it where it has a blue background on the setup and is a bit more zoomed out. The setup process itself was identical though on all Windows 10 installs that I did. First, it confirms your language, time, currency, and keyboard type. Next, it'll ask you to type in your Windows product key. This is the 25 digit key that you received when you purchased Windows. I'm gonna censor my product key for obvious reasons. Next, it'll ask you to choose what operating system you're installing. I only have one option here, Windows 10 Pro. Then it'll ask you to accept the Microsoft software license terms. I'm certainly not going to read all of that, but I'll accept the license terms anyway. Then it'll ask us where we want to install Windows. The Bootcamp Assistant helped us out by labeling the drive Bootcamp for us. So select that one. You'll notice that it says at the bottom that Windows can't be installed on this partition. This is totally normal. We just have to format the drive to NTFS, which you can't do in Mac OS. So we have to do it here by clicking the format button and then clicking OK. Just be careful here because you don't want to accidentally select and format your Mac OS drive. After formatting, the note at the bottom goes away and we can click next to continue. And if you make it to this point with no hiccups, you're pretty much home free and the rest is almost self-explanatory. Uh, it'll take a little while to install Windows and it'll restart the computer. So I'll wait for this to load off screen and then I'll be right back. After the installation and restart, it'll take us through a few screens to set up Windows. I'll choose the Express settings. It'll ask who owns the PC and it'll ask you to create or log into your Microsoft account. I already have one, so I'll type in my email and password to move on. Next, it'll ask you to set up a security pin to log into Windows. Then it asks you if you'd like to use OneDrive, and then asks if you'd like to use Cortana, which I don't. And then finally, we get taken to the Windows 10 welcome screen. Now, the next part I wasn't able to capture with my capture box, but basically after this final setup here, it takes you to the login screen where you just click and type in the pin you just created, and then it logs you into the Windows desktop. So I'll meet you there. The last thing to do is run the bootcamp installer. Go to the Windows icon in the lower left, then go to File Explorer, and then find the Win Installer USB drive. From here, open the bootcamp folder and run the setup file inside. After running this installer, it installs a bunch of drivers for Windows so that it runs smoothly on your Mac. It also adds a utility that allows us to easily boot back into Mac OS whenever we want. The computer will restart after running the installer, and after it restarts, the bootcamp help dialog will pop up if you need it. To restart the computer back into Mac OS X, click the gray diamond icon from the icons in the lower right. To boot from Mac OS back into Windows, go to your system preferences and then click on startup disk. From here, click the lock to make changes and type in your admin password. Then click on the Windows partition and click restart to boot into Windows. All right guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.